Now to the war in Ukraine. For the past few days, Zelensky has been traveling around Europe. The Ukrainian president, he's been traveling. He's visited three countries, Spain, Belgium, and Portugal. As Russia intensifies its assault on Ukraine, Zelensky is trying to add to Ukraine's arsenal. But where will he deploy these weapons? French President Emmanuel Macron has some ideas. He says Ukraine could launch attacks deep inside Russia. Germany, too, has given the green light. And this is a very significant shift. Because until now, European powers had drawn a red line. Ukraine could not use Western weapons to strike inside Russia. They were meant only for defense, not offense. So what has changed now? And will this shift help Ukraine's prospects in the battlefield? Our next report explores. It's rare for world leaders to turn to visual aids when they speak to the press. But yesterday, Emmanuel Macron had come prepared. He appeared before journalists with a map of Ukraine. So how do we explain to the Ukrainians that we're going to have to protect these towns and basically everything we want around Kharkiv at the moment? If we tell them you're not allowed to reach the point where the missiles are fired from. Macron was referring to the recent Russian attacks on Kharkiv. That's Ukraine's second largest city. Missiles dropped on defenseless Ukrainians. At least 18 people died in the bombing. Macron wants to help Ukraine retaliate. He thinks there's only one option left. We think that we should allow them to neutralize the military sites from which the missiles are fired. He's talking about the Russian military bases where the missiles were launched from. This has been a long-standing demand from Kyiv. But the French president has defined clear red lines for Ukraine. Ukrainian forces can strike only military targets, like the Russian base in Belgorod. It's barely 12 kilometers away from Ukraine's border with Russia. The attack in Kharkiv was launched from there. In the past, Ukraine's forces have tried to neutralize the Russian military presence in Belgorod. But now they have the license to use French long-range missiles like the Scalp. They have a range of 155 kilometers, and they can carry a 400-kilogram warhead. France has supplied an unknown number of Scalp missiles to Ukraine. Germany, on the other hand, has not given any such weapon to Kyiv. German Chancellor Olaf Scholz still remains wary, but he seems prepared to offer a compromise. Ukraine has every possibility under international law for what it is doing. That has to be said explicitly. It was attacked and may defend itself. Europe is reacting to recent events on the battlefield. It's trying to restore the balance. The delay in military aid from America gave an opening to the Russians. Ukraine no longer has the same combat power as it did last summer when it launched a counter-offensive against Russia. Russian forces are in a stronger position. They have intensified their attacks with an aim to secure more gains on the battlefield. So Ukraine's counterattacks could make them weaker, but it's a risky gamble. Already, the Russian president is issuing fresh threats. The representatives of countries that are NATO members, particularly in Europe, particularly in small countries, should be aware of what they are playing with. They should remember that these are primarily countries with small territory and dense population. And this factor they should take into account before they speak about strikes deep into the Russian territory. Next month, Switzerland is hosting a peace summit for Ukraine. But with both Ukraine and Russia facing off on the battlefield, the war in Ukraine is only heading one way. And that's escalation. <laughs> South Africa's May 29th elections. There was a start of change in the country. We are on the verge of history. I am standing here at the forefront of change where voices echo the call for action. The nation grapples with an unemployment crisis. As South Africans prepare to cast their votes, the question looms, will the winds of change usher in a new era? or will the legacy of the past maintain its grip on the future?